Hi everyone, this is Renee Francis with A Matter of Perception. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at uh, a cold case from uh, 1989, Jennifer Lynn Fay, missing way too long now at a Brockton Mass. And um, there are some funny circumstances surrounding the whole thing. Um, we have gotten a uh, request from someone who saw the work that we uh, did with Tony Anderson out of... Um, Missouri, Kansas City, Missouri, and uh, anyway, uh, she had provided us with uh, the details about uh, where Jennifer was last seen on Main Street and Broad, and uh, that it was in between 9 and 10.30, so we uh, erected one of the maps that we do on her behalf, and we we're going to show you all the planetary patterns that were operating at the time, the night of her disappearance, and hopefully um, one of the is going to be laying over the terrain of where she can be recovered. Um, and uh, anyway, this whole page here at our site, uh, we have all the longitude for the measurement of the planets, and we're showing the charts that we're using. Um, we have her birth chart and the numbers um, involved in that. Um, and then here are all my notes and um, my thoughts on her case and what I think um, what transpired okay so uh, but uh, let me just tell you a little bit about what we do here in a matter of perception um, we have been uh, we have been um, measuring the point of disappearance to the point of recovery and we've been paralleling those numeric facts alongside the numeric facts in the astronomical process meaning that um, we're seeing the parallels existing between the patterns the planets are making and when they're flipped at 90 degrees and put at ground level uh, those patterns are um, showing direction and distance to the recovery so right now we have 90 cases out of 100 that we're illustrating at our site and you can actually come here and you can actually peruse this all by yourself um, i have hand picked three cases out here um, one is um, going to be uh, holly uh, perenin uh, out of massachusetts i'm going to illustrate her for you to show how uh, the plants at the time of her disappearance um, point in the direction of where she was found. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at uh, uh, Molly uh, Bish and I'll be showing you where the how the stars at the time of her disappearance pointed to where she was recovered and uh, most recently is uh, Michael. Uh, he was last seen at a Celtics game and his remains were recovered and we're going to show you how um, the stars at the night of his disappearance uh, patterned out to where he was located. So uh, that's um, that's what we're going to do uh, in this video uh, to help with uh, our ideas on Jennifer and where to look for her. So uh, this 100 study, you can actually come here and look at it yourself at our site, Matter of Perception, okay, dot org. And um, uh, so far, uh, there's 90 cases here, but when we did this video, we had 83 cases illustrated. Um, and what we found was that 33 times the sun was forming a major aspect to the found bearing. And when I say aspect, we mean pattern, okay? So a found bearing, what does that mean? Okay, well, if you take a person's point of disappearance and then you measure that point to point of recovery, how are you going to me measure that? Well, we're measuring it in true north. So we're measuring with a compass, okay? So that point, okay, can form, that measurement can actually form an aspect to the sun's measurement, okay, when we flip them. And this might become a little bit clearer when I show you, um, when I show you that we can actually, uh, let me bring this up, okay. This is, we can measure the planets, okay. Just like, hold on for one second, let me show you this first, okay. All right, so we can measure the planets in their, uh, this is a man-made construct coordinate system. The geographical war coordinate system is a man-made construct so that we can find our place on the globe, okay? Zero degrees in geographical coordinates begins at Greenwich Mean, Greenwich mean okay? That's the prime meridian is zero, okay? Everything else from there is, um, um, is measured west and east of the prime meridian. Okay, and then you have your that's your la then that's your longitude is prime meridian zero at Greenwich, and then of course you have your latitude and zero degrees is uh, at the is the equator. Okay, so we 
this is, again, this is a man-made construct, okay? This is a man-made co construct so that we could find our place on the globe. Back in the 1500s, longitude, finding your longitude for seafarers was a problem. They had to come up with a way that they could get their longitude. They used to do it by the stars, but when it was cloudy, they can't see and they can't navigate. So they had a John um, Harrison was the man who um, Parliament had offered a reward on anybody who could solve the longitude problem. And John Harrison did so. He built the clock that would maintain time at sea. And all they needed to know was the time of it was of the time of where it was that they were leaving, and then um, they would be able to get their longitude. Very very interesting story. Um, but anyway, so we also we also have a celestial coordinate system. Again, another man-made construct. Okay, this time zero degrees is beginning at this spring equinox and that's Aries when the sun is in Aries okay again this is an imaginary sphere okay with a grid system and that is so we can measure where the planets are okay so right here is a um this right here is the an ephemeris okay and it's and it's the it's a greek word that means diary and what it is it's a diary and it's given us the measurement of the planets at i had this ephemeris i had made for noon okay for november in 1989 okay so here is the 14th from when jennifer disappeared so it's telling us here's the sun the moon mercury venus mars jupiter saturn uranus neptune pluto okay so at, you'll see that in the sun here, okay, the sun is clicking like a clock. It's moving one degree every day, okay? Nine degrees, 10 degrees, 11, 12, 13, 14, so on and so on. The moon moves 13 degrees a day. So the moon takes two and a half days to transit one sign of the zodiac. Hence, it moves through the, it, it moves every 29 days, it's moving through the zodiac, okay? Mercury has an uh, is an has an 81 degree orb around the sun, so he moves in he moves pretty quickly. So he's going from three degrees, jumping five, six, eight, ten, eleven. You see how it jumps, okay? He jumps along pretty quickly. Venus ticks like a clock too. She pretty much ticks like a clock. She'll slow down and move quicker depending on where she is. Um, you know, so each one of these planets have their own orbital speed in which they move around the sun. And they can all be measured on that celestial longitude, that celestial measurement, that 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 man construct. Okay, that was developed. Okay, but but the starting point is zero degrees Aries. Okay, so on the fourteenth, this is telling us that the sun was in Scorpio at twenty-two degrees. The moon at noon was um, at twelve. Mercury at noon was twenty-four degrees. I, I think I either set this up for 12 noon or 12 midnight. I'm not sure. I think it's 12 noon I set it up for. Uh, Venus was 9 degrees Capricorn. Mars was 7 degrees Scorpio. Jupiter was 10 degrees Cancer. Saturn was 10 degrees Capricorn. Okay, so if Jupiter was 10 degrees Capricorn, I mean Cancer, and Saturn was 10 degrees Capricorn, that means those two planets were opposing one another because Cancer and Capricorn opposed, and they were opposing exactly. Okay. Uranus, 3 degrees Capricorn, Neptune, 3 degrees Capricorn, Pluto, 15 degrees Scorpio. So this is giving us the measurement of all the planets across the board on that date that she went missing. Okay, and then here they are on the 15th. Okay, so this is an ephemeris. This is how the, the planets are mathematically calculated for their measurements. Okay. So when we go to uh, Jennifer's page and we look at, now I showed you that grid across the board, okay? If I want to show you that, let's go back to her file here. And this is, I'm going to show you for Jennifer Gone. Um, where is she here? She is, okay. This is the chart for when, this is a chart for 1030. This is the chart that I believe when something went wrong or she met up with with the with the folks who uh, are involved with her disappearance and I did this because I want to look at this point right here I want this point right here I want to know it was I want this point to hit something in Jennifer's chart and it does so at 1020 15 degrees Leo rises this is ticking like a clock at 10 
20, it's 15 degrees, okay? If we're at 1030, it's going to be 16 degrees. If we're above that time and we're at 1015, it's going to be 14 degrees, okay? It's ticking like a clock. Every During the course of the day, every one of the signs, 360 degrees, are going to tick around the chart, okay? Because that's what it is. The the Our solar system is nothing but a big this big clock, okay? All right, so I set the chart up for Jennifer being gone, and these are the patterns that we uh, made for her in her map based on this time, okay? So I caught the ascendant in here, um, and I did this because I will show you, uh, not here, but I will show you in on her page why I did that, okay? Why well, I did 10.30. I did 10.30 because uh, Leo was rising at 15 degrees, and Jennifer at her birth had... Uh, Mercury at 15 degrees um, Sag. So so typically what I find during the course of my study of this for 25 years of any kind of disappearance or abduction that it occurs that the point at the horizon which is this point right in here okay this is for, for her from when she was born has to hit a planet in their chart. It, it, what's triggering it? What's making that? What's making this path lead to that path? Like everything is disconnected. Okay, so that's why I set this up for ten thirty. I think that this is when she met up with the people who were involved. Okay, with her disappearance. Okay, however, I don't think she died until the fifteenth at twelve thirty, and. That is because I want this moon right here in this in this eighth house of death. I want this moon here to be hitting that ascendant, and it does so at twelve thirty. So, so if you can, if we can go fifteen minutes before twelve thirty and fifteen minutes after twelve thirty, anything that you can clock in between that time frame of um, how far people could have driven with her, um, you know, who had a car. Uh, you know, uh, that's a time frame that I'm looking at that, that she expired. Okay. And I do think that she is expired. Um, what I did have a, a hard time trying to decide is whether she died from a confrontation and a blow to the head, or if she overindulged, got sick and wind up choking up on choking on her own vomit. And I say this because, um, there's, there's, uh, there's contradictions here in her in her own natal birth chart. Okay, I want to go. I want to go with confrontation. I want to think that she. Uh, I I want to go with the fact that I think that she um, um, was in a confrontation. That I, I I get a female involvement. I get a jealous involvement. Um, because, uh, let me just talk about Jennifer's chart for a second. Okay. Very vivacious female here. And I don't think that she would have backed down from anyone. Okay. She has Capricorn rising. Okay. At the center. And this makes her thin and bony. Like she may have been, you know, she probably, um, she probably could have ran track or something like that. So this would give her, you know, she'd, she'd be tall, uh, lanky. Okay. Uh, Saturn here is, um, in the uh, Gemini, so she may have liked uh, like quick foods, fun foods. Um, uh, this also could have given her um, maybe there was some. She could could have also made her a little bit of picky about what she ate. What scares me about this aspect is that it's exactly opposing this Mercury right here, and this is her food. This is diet. Okay, so um, she, you know, she may have had a favorite kind of food that she would eat all the time and like, you know, she could have been stuck there. And another thing that bothers me is that this moon right here is, is part of this aspect Okay, and the moon is very vital to a woman's health. So this is bothering me. When I, when I see a Virgo moon, I, I, it makes me think of food. It makes me think that maybe she had a sensitive stomach towards some things. But it's also in her house, uh, the eighth house. And the eighth house here is the house of death. And so I wonder if she overindulged and got sick. And maybe if she passed out and she vomited, she could have choked on her own vomit because... I, I get the feeling when, when Saturn stops things and Mercury rules our lungs. So when I see this, I get a, I, I get her breath stopping. You know, I, the lungs, she can't breathe. But at the same time, 
that's one aspect. But if I look at the house of death here, and I see that the sun is ruling that, Leo is here, and the sun is back here on the first house of the head, and I see that it is in square to the sun, that's confrontational. That's her not backing down. That's her standing up for herself. And I'm wondering, for some reason, I get the feeling of betrayal. I get the feeling that... You know, maybe if she liked the boy and, you know, maybe, you know, there was a confrontation with another female and, 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 and things, um, you know, and because of overindulgence, everybody is not doing the right thing. Now, the, the other thing that gives me the feeling of the overindulgence is that she has the Venus and she has Neptune conjunct here in, in a fire sign. Okay. So, you know, she will she will overindulge. Not only that, but her moon is squaring this point and this is the 11th house of friends. So it seems to me that her confrontation is, is being ruled by the moon here. This is open enemies. It's squaring here. So I have to say that you, from what I've read so far, that you're right, that this is not a stranger, that one of her friends, somebody that she was with, is is directly responsible for her death. I just get the feeling that there was a rift, there was some kind of uh, fight, confrontation, jealousy, maybe, um, you know, a, you know, a, what makes girls fight? Boys, right? Um, and now here's another thing that I wind up finding out when I looked, when I took a look at this, um, because we had, um, Jennifer's time of her birth. Okay. I'm able to do what's called a diurnal chart. Okay. And that's bringing in, that's bringing in the, what's going on. Typically I use diurnal charts for timing people for gambling, getting pregnant. I want to time success for you. So I want to do it diurnally every year. Let me just go back up here for a second. If this is Jennifer's chart when she was born, she had um, Capricorn rising at three degrees, okay? Um, then that means that down here in her diurnal in November, okay, this is what she has rising, okay? That point is ticking like a clock. Remember, I told you it all ticks like a clock. So I want to look at this chart, and I want it to tell me about more. Th I want I want it to tell me more things about what's going on in that day, okay? So again, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Um, this is set up for seven fifteen diurnally, okay? So right here we have Scorpio rising three days before that Mars it was a Saturday three days before she disappeared Mars was at this ascendant another fight another argument another like boy in the picture all this Scorpio is coming up a few the week before she disappeared what was going on with people the week before she disappeared what made her that Tuesday night relinquish herself from her duties of babysitting and calling her cousin to wanting to go out at nine or 10 o'clock at night. Why? What, what propels a, a young girl to do that? Friends, boys, right? Perhaps she knew that there was a, she knew there was a party going on and she wanted to be there because the boy she liked was going to be there. Um, when I look back at myself being 16 years old in 1979, um, I mean, we were, I, I was going into bars when I was 15 years old. We were going into nightclubs when I was 15 years old from Jersey. And so I can't help but think that there may have been a bar in the area that did some underage drinking and, um, you know, could she have gone somewhere there? or, you know, later on that night, or, you know, where, you know, today we have cell phones. Um, back then, if you wanted to, if you, if you wanted to meet up with your friends, you had to, you had to, you had to go to the spot. You had to meet them where everybody meets. Well, where, where do they all meet? You know, where's those spots? So maybe our map that we did here might highlight some of those areas. Um, while I was working on Jennifer's case, I do try to listen and listen intently. Uh, so again, let me just reiterate here that I'm a little confused on whether or not I think, I don't think that she was deliberately murdered. I think there was a rift. There was a fight. There was, you know, there was alcohol involved and things got overblown. And, but if she died from this fight, then it was a blow to the head because of that sun that she has here. Okay. Not only that, but this would be diurnally, this would be her head. She has all these planets in this area. And then, um, 
by the time this is her diurnally at 715, this is ticking up. Eventually, Saturn, uh, Sagittarius is going to come up here. It's going to call in these planets. This is the drinking and the party that day. This is also our head. This is also something that got out of control because it's Neptune, okay? And, what's, and it seems like everyone's real vague and lying about this whole thing, and that's Neptunian. Um, I do think, like I said, that who when, when this happened, I think there was a few people, um, you know, uh, a few people involved. I don't, I just don't get like a one-on-one -on -one confrontation here. I get like, you know, um, several people. And also while I was, um, working with her chart and, uh, going over some of these stars, I, you know, I, I hear things sometimes and I just, these are the male names that I was hearing. Um, I don't know if they mean anything. Uh, they could be her friends. They could be people who are involved. They could be just people who are friends with her, people who she knows. But I got, I kept on getting Jeffrey and Jeff or Jeff, Ray, Ernie. Um, and then the female names I was getting was Janie and Jenny, uh, Ginny, um, Eileen or Irene. Um, now these could also be street names. They could be, they could be a name of a bar, uh, Flynn, Finn, uh, Finlay, Finney or Farney, things that maybe that, that, that might sound like that. So does any of these things even play in? I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm just calling it out there. Now, again, you're going to, when you read here, you're going to get some, you're going to get some contradictions in here that I am stuck between thinking either way. I just feel like there was a riff that night or there was a fight that Saturday night. And maybe that fight Saturday night or argument was the reason why she wanted to go out Tuesday night. And anyway, so that's maybe where I might be getting a little confused on, on how I think that she died. Um, but it just looks to me that it could have been very quick, very sudden, very unexpected. I'm not so sure I see a planned, in, you know, murder with intent. Um, and another thing that I kept on getting while I was working with this was football. Who is wearing the football jersey or who plays football? Who had something to lose? And if she went to somebody's house and she was drinking there and this happened, whose house was she at? Who had something to lose by underage drinking happening in their house? Who had something to lose because now they have a um, expired female in their home who had something to lose among her friends that were involved in this. This was what just kept on coming to my mind as I was working on this and, and the football thing kept on coming up. Um, another thing that, um, I wind up, uh, looking at her chart when, when I look at somebody's chart about where, where could they be? Okay. Let's go back up here to Jennifer's, um, uh, a birth chart okay I just want to highlight a few things okay so right here we have Aries oh I didn't want black I'm sorry hold on I dumped that I want yellow okay so this is the resting place right here okay that's 28 degrees Aries okay Aries to me is 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 it's it's dry okay now I know that one of the articles I read in the Charlie project had said that um, there was uh, um, a mention of her being murdered and putting in somebody's car and in a lake okay well in her chart Mars rules Aries and Aries is ruling her resting place and Mars is up here in the 11th house of friends okay again in Scorpio okay that's water that's murky water that's lakes that's ponds and 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 Mars, Mars and Mercury rule the car, okay? Mercury rules the transportation side of the purpose of the car, whereas Mars rules the engine, the heat, and the combustion that needs to take them move that vehicle, okay? So her being in a lake in somebody's car is probable, okay? But what the problem here is, I don't know, I'm hoping that maybe... Maybe our map and where you see these lines moving over these ponds maybe could better direct one of the searches for you, maybe of a pond that you didn't already check for her, okay? But again, let me go back and say that this definitely could suggest that she is in a car and in a pond, okay? But it also could suggest that where she rests, okay, there's some kind of sports around it, 
Okay, so I actually in the map highlighted some golf ranges. Um, I did want to go through the different high schools in the area and see who had football fields and if there was any ponds around those things. But you can actually do that yourself once we get into her map. Um, and uh, uh, what was the other thing I saw? Okay, so so this Mars is in the house of friends. Okay, and this is if this is her friends. And then if this is, okay, if this is Jennifer and this is her neighborhood, okay, which is, will also be her resting places, each one of these houses has more than one, one meaning around her life, okay? But if I want to look at her friend's property, okay, whose car is it? Whose car could she be in? Whose car is this? Could this be a car that is, it could be a car that was stolen. Um, but if, if it was a friend's, Involvement, one, two, three, then it would be this here. Hmm. I don't know. How about how about where this person worked? This it seems like this sixth house is getting called in, so it could be if she isn't in, in a vehicle that was connected to a friend, could it be from their job? I'm wondering, because if I want to go to her friend and her friend's car. See, this would be, if Jennifer had a car, this house would be her car. The third right here would be her car. But I want to go to the third house from her friend. That This house is, and now this house is ruled by Capricorn, and it's over here in the sixth of work. But it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Could be something they stole. It could be, it's either a vehicle that came from his job or a vehicle they stole. If it's a vehicle, okay? Or, again, she could be on barren land as well. And whoever said that story about her being in the car uh, could have been just lying to th throw things off track. You know, can you believe people who, who, who are killers? I don't think you can. All right. So when you read through this, you're probably you're going to get some contradictions because, again, I just saw too many things in here that was telling me either she got sick because of overindulgence or emotionally something got emotionally overblown and now we got a blow to the head so typically i don't sometimes i i just call it the way i the way i see it and you know i'm sorry that i have to give um you know be unsure about that but the only thing i'm sure about is the fact that you're looking that you're looking for remains but you already know that so you know you can read all through this stuff these were just some of my ideas while i was working okay now let me do this real quick okay um, look at the birth dates of the people that you have involved in this case, okay? Look at their birth dates and find out if any one of these dates could be any one of their birthdays because I will show you longitude, okay? This is longitude of the planets at the time when Jennifer was born. This is what the sun measured in its sign signature. This is what it measures in its total degrees of longitude, okay? So what we've been finding in our study for 25 years, okay, is that sometimes these longitude numbers, I'm going to give you some examples here. Heather Graham, she ran in, she she left a, a concert or bar, uh, she was drunk, she was walking, and Jesse Matthews seen her, turned a car around, this was all caught on video footage, and well anyway, he wound up picking her up and he murdered her he left her in an abandoned house anyway when she was born uranus was two degrees aquarius which which in total degrees of longitude is 302 jesse matthew's birthday he was i'm sorry jesse matthews was sentenced on um march 2nd that same number okay um the disappearance these are the numbers in the disappearance and these are how the numbers turned up 11 11 11 days later he was arrested her remains was recovered 11 miles away, okay? So this is how those numbers in gens can actually play into where she is when she's recovered and 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 who's involved, okay? Here's Kaylee Ann Poulton. This is a case I worked on called police. New York State Police told them that the neighbor did this. He took her, he put her in a tank somewhere, somewhere where he worked. Two years later, next door neighbor confesses to his wife. She turned his girlfriend at the time. She turns him in, and Kaylee Ann is finally recovered from a thirty thousand gallon cooling tank where this guy worked part time as a security guard. Okay, so in her birth chart, she had the sun twenty seven degrees. It was twenty seven months later that she and remains were recovered. Venus was nine degrees Scorpio. It was on the 9th of September that she was um, that she disappeared. 
Her Mars was zero degrees Libra and total degrees it's 180 and remains recovered from the cooling tank on March 10th. On Jupiter 8th, okay, now you're seeing this, okay? This is two different planets measuring two different degrees in their sign signatures, but in their total degrees of longitude, it, they, they invert to be a date that is in correspondence to this case. Mark Christie confessed to her murder on August 9th. They went on August 10th and got her out of the cooling tank, okay? This is disappearance. These are the numbers that work for that. Uh, Polly, okay? Richard Allen Davis. Polly was born on... Um, Polly was born... When Polly was born, Venus was 20 degrees. Sagittarius, it's 260 degrees. Richard Allen Davis, the gentleman who murdered her, his birthday was 6'2". Okay, so what I'm trying to tell you is pay attention to, there. there's a bunch of them here. I can go on and on, but I'm not, okay? Pay attention to Jen's numbers because the date of birth of the person who's responsible for this could be here, okay? Are they born July 23rd or March 27th? Are they born June 11th or 11-6 uh, or 11-16? Um, are they, what happened 11-16? Her moon is 11 degrees Virgo, okay? That's the month she disappeared. What happened on 11-6? What happened on 11-16? A couple days, the day, the, the day after her murder, uh, I mean, uh, her, um, her disappearance. What happened on the 16th? Who, who started being, who, you know, who'd you talk to first? Um, so any of these numbers, May 25th, pay attention to them. These numbers here, now these are the longitude numbers for the disappearance. These are the uh, vector bearings measurements that we drew out lines for where she where she's where she's located. This is the number of the the radiuses for mileage and distance. Five miles, fifteen miles, ten miles, three miles, seven miles. Okay. We also I also added in her birth chart. Okay. So th so these measurements are in there as well. Um, so let's go right now and take a look at this map. Okay. So. On her page is, is her map. I, I now, right here, right now, have the aspect of the Venus, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus um, uh, conjunction squared going on, okay? that That's the aspect that I have on right now, okay? So if I, if I drag into this, zoom into this, okay, this is the center point. We're, we're here where uh, we were told that she was last seen on this corner. Okay, so all the vectors are being drawn out from this point out, okay, in her map. Um, now, she is going to be on one of these, okay? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight patterns that we drew out. This is the Ascendant Moon sextile as it was at um, 1020, okay? So any of these lines going over people's houses, any of these lines going over places where these kids would meet up, any of these lines going over bars where she would have went to maybe the guy she liked hung out there if he was older than her. Um, it was mentioned that Jennifer had friends from all walks, okay? I know when I was growing up, we had the Bird, we had the North End, we had Upper Elmora, Lower Elmora, we had Bay Way. So we had groups. I was friends with people around my town in Frog Hollow, the Berg, Upper Elmora, Lower Elmora, Bay Way, North End. Um, then you had the then they had the port. So where are these lines going? And what are you? What is your intel in your investigation um, revealing? Okay, our maps are not to be used alone. Our maps are intended to work alongside investigative intel. Um, nowadays, where we can we can cite cell pings, but back then, where are the places that she would have went? Where's where's the where do her friends live? Um, where'd they hang out? Where are the bars that maybe she could have went to? She you know these kids were probably getting some of it was probably uh, serving underage, and who knows maybe she went there to you know meet up with somebody or she was mad looking for them or whatever. I just get a feeling of being emotionally overblown for her and in, in those stars that, that night that she disappeared um so you know who was the love interest at the time or who had an interest in her um anyway so you have eight patterns here that's that's the one so you need to look at them independently but on their own okay now another thing is um the best place to do is to look at use this link 
and go to her map on its own, okay? Because it's going to open it up in a um, uh, its own browser window and you'll be able to manipulate and you'll be able to go to satellite view here, okay? I know we're getting at 34 minutes here and I haven't even demonstrated some of the cases that I wanted to yet. But here's a great little tool here, like say if you wanted to get her... Um, you know, you knew that she hung out on Orchard Avenue, okay? And you knew the number, like one, two, three, Orchard Ave. Brockton, all right, is there one? See, it'll even, you can add a marker to that there. And you'll not be able, you won't be able to save it, okay? But you'll be able to see if any of our lines are heading out there from, from things that you know. Okay, it looks like a lot of these lines are heading out over to this junior high school that the kids hang out in the, in the schoolyard at night afterwards and they go there and they drink. I mean, it's cold out. If they weren't getting in somebody's house, you know, where were they doing this part in? Okay, I get the feeling that they, for some reason, I, I get the feeling that they're... I get the feeling that they were in somebody's home and that's why this is all hidden because, you know, um, you know, there's, there's, somebody has a lot to lose by something happened to her in, into their home, but, um, I, I could be wrong. Okay. So I, I would prefer that you looked at her map here and always, always refresh it. Cause, um, I might want to do a couple of more hot spots. I only hot spotted two things. So, um, in this folder, let me just go back to the one. I'm just going to get out of this. Okay. This is the one that I had up here. These are all the radiuses. I went out one tenth of a mile to see if anybody's, you know, home is in this radius, anybody's home in this radius, anybody's home in this radius, or places where they would go and hang out and drink. Okay, and then these are all the miles and distance. And they, as you as you turn them on, see these little eyes. Turn them on, turn them off. Now you're looking at 1.9 mile. Now you're at two miles. Okay, and you can just zoom in and zoom out. You can use these, or you can just use your mouse wheel. Looking at this on a phone is not going to do it any justice. You can use it on a phone, but not after you've actually sat here and made love to this map one by one. Okay, again, our maps are to be used alongside the intel that you have from your own investigation into this, um, into this disappearance. And um, so if I want to turn on the moon square, which is very important, okay, uh, I think I've already showed you that in, 100 case, in, the, um, in these cases, um, 33 times the sun is forming an aspect to the found bearing, okay, and I'm going to, I'm going to show you what that found bearing is in, in one minute, okay. Um, so that would be the moon square. That would be the sun-mercury conjunction squared. See these lines, okay? The, the dotted lines are just as powerful as these. The summer conjunction of trine. Pluto, Mars Pluto, okay? Just one by one, zoom out, look and see where they're all going. Where What bodies of water are they going over? Okay, there was one area that I did here. Um, how about this one right here? Was this ever checked? I don't know. I think there was another line going through there. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. The Venus conjunction was going through there. It was a, the trine of the square. The trine. Okay. Was going through here. Okay. Then what I did for confirmation is I did some work on her birth chart. And same thing. Directions. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven patterns. Again, all of them need to be looked at one by one. I didn't finish. Um hot spotting this with my ideas because you guys have been working on this for almost for about 30 years already and you know what ponds you looked at so I mean if you wanted to um, ask me questions about different areas um, I would be glad to talk to anybody about it um, I'm just I just don't want to go ahead and put any more time into it because you've already know what's been checked and where she is not. So, um, but I can always add to, I can always add to it. And as I look, um, you know, I'm, I still might. So you always want to, again, refresh this browser. So, um, 
let me just show you something I handpicked. I want to talk about bearing so you understand why these lines are important, okay? Um, one of the gals in our um, 100 study, and this is thanks to Jennifer. Because of Jennifer and looking at Jennifer's case, we came across Holly, okay? Holly is an old case back in 1993, okay? Her remains were recovered, okay? She was recovered from the point of her disappearance to the point of her recovery. It was 6.19 miles, okay? Venus in the chart at the time measured 4.17, okay? So it gave us the near distance. The point of her abduction, the point of her recovery, measured 223 degrees true north vector bearing, which is 13 degrees Scorpio. So she was actually, Pluto was pulling out into the direction of where she was covered, and she had a, Plu, a sun Pluto square. Okay? I'm going to show you this, all this, in a uh, illustration here. This is what we did to illustrate her case. Okay? So she was taken from here on Allen Hill Road. She went to go look at puppies. Okay, she was staying with her and her brother. We were visiting with her uh, grandmother's vacation cottage out here. And she was found here. Okay, so it was, we drew a radius of 6.19 miles to this point. Okay, and then we, here's your compass. And then we drew a vector bearing to that point of 223. Okay, so now you understand how this is 223. The vector bearing from this point to this point is 223. Okay. So in the chart, when she disappeared, let me just go back here and show you this chart. Okay. Oop, oop, oop. Sorry, sweetheart. Hold on. Okay. So when she disappeared, she had, there was, there was lots of aspects going on in these planets. Okay. But she was found, this is the one she was found on. Okay. 13 degrees from this point to this point, it was 13 degrees Scorpio. Her son is 13 degrees Leo. That's an exact square. Okay, and it was square to Pluto, and but Pluto's in Scorpio, but Pluto, this is Pluto's line here, and this is the, the sun's line. Here's the sun's line in Leo, and here's Pluto, okay? But we drew the, all the way, we drew the square all the way around at both those two points of 23 and 13 degrees to make this a square, okay? And that's a square. I mean, these two are square here, but what's the other end of those squares? And this is the other end of those points, okay? So she was found on the Sun-Pluto square. That's where she was found, okay? But that's not the only aspect that was occurring when she disappeared. It wasn't the only aspect, okay? Let's see what else was happening. Um, we had the moon here was trying Pluto, okay? Um, we had, um, Mercury up here at 24 was opposing here. Okay. So there's other patterns going on at the time she disappeared, but it's, this is the one she showed up on. Okay. That's the one she showed up on. So if we go back over here, okay, let me dump. Okay. This is the sun Pluto square. That's what it looks like. Those are these lines drawn out, all the vectors drawn out for the Pluto, for the sun, okay? Then we, we IP, the imaginary points to finish those squares are here, okay? Then this here overlay right here is the how many feet. It was 72 feet, actually. I just measured that, and I didn't write that in there. It was 72 feet. So Pluto was actually, Pluto's line was 72 feet away from where she was recovered. Okay, but the sun's vector imaginary point, the sun is here, and its imaginary point here to finish the square is right on that. Okay, and then these are just the tags for the illustration. So that's little Holly. Okay, so that's why I, I handpicked her. And because of uh, Jennifer's face case, um, and exploring it, we found her, and we we looked at it, and we said, well, look at this, it works. So we not only did we add her to our study, um, but we want to use it as an example to show you um, why you'll be able to use our map and trust it to give you Jennifer, okay? So now let's take a look at Molly Bish, okay? Molly Bish, we found her, again, because of Jennifer Fay, 
and we worked her up okay so she was last seen her mom dropped her off at her lifeguard job in the commons pond in warren massachusetts it was in 2000 okay uh three years later she was recovered on whiskey hill in palmer massachusetts okay so the vector bearing from where she was taken to where she was found was 305 degrees which is five degrees aquarius the direct miles okay was 3.29 and we had jupiter at at 29 degrees tour so we we got a 29 there so we have near distance okay neptune in this chart is five degrees aquarius we have another conjunction we have a, we have the where she was found was conjoining a planet okay this is important okay so she was actually found on the moon pluto square okay so i'm going to go here all right so this is commons pond where her mom dropped her off okay her remains were recovered here let me just move this down just a sliver, okay? So we drew the radius out for 3.9 miles. That's the compass. That's the vector bearing, 305. Okay, that's what we mean when we say vector bearing. And then if we turn on the tags, and then it was, this was the Moon-Neptune square, okay? So let me just show you the Moon-Neptune square. Um, Back here, we're gonna go to the moon Neptune square. The moon is here, seven degrees Taurus, that's fixed. Seven, fixed Aquarius, five. So these two planets are square to one another, okay? They are forming a almost 90 degree angle. It's only two degrees off, two degrees away from it. Okay, so we're here, we're here. This is the moons being vectored out. And then you can't even see Neptune's vector, red vector line, because it's underneath the vector bearing that she was found, which is the conjunction, okay? And that's Molly Bish. So we got near distance. I think we also did her, did we do her birth? Yeah, even her birth, okay? So her birth, um, her birth, she had the sun and she had the moon square. So this would be the imaginary point, okay? So, so she was found. Her son is nine degrees Leo. She was found on the other end of her son. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. She was found on the other end of her son. She was found over here in five. Found on the other end of it. The moon square at that point. Even though we don't have a time for Molly Bish, but I do know that that sun and moon are square for that day. So it still still works, okay? Um. Okay, so that's Molly Bish. That's another Massachusetts case, okay, that we found because of Jennifer. We added her to our study. Um, it's important. All these children in our study are speaking loud and clearly. They're, they're like, they're waving their hands every time we find them and saying, use me, use me. And we're using them because it works, okay? We're looking, we're looking, we're measuring, we're, me we're looking at the maps, we're measuring the point of disappearance to the point of recovery. One more Massachusetts case I'm going to show you, and that's Michael, okay? He disappeared, this is just recently in March, he disappeared from a Celtics game. And uh, he was actually, um, he was found up here in the locks. And um, I'm going to show you that one, okay? So again, there's a lot of aspects that were coming, that were happening at the time of his, of his disappearance, but he turned up on the Pluto-Mercury square, okay? He turned up on the Pluto-Mercury square, which is, uh, Pluto is here at 19 degrees. Mercury is here. And then you have Jupiter, okay? So he turned up actually on the end of this. He turned up on the Aries here. He turned up. But the other end of that point would be there. And then, they, again, you have your square, okay? I'm not saying that they all turn up on squares. They don't. Sometimes they're going to turn up on a sextile or they're going to turn up on a trine, 120 degrees, okay? But let's just look at his, uh, let's dump that for a second and let's go look at his map, okay? So here's the Celtic game where he left. It was seen on video footage going outside with a lit cigarette in his mouth. This is where he was recovered. It's 1.6 mile, okay? That's the, that's the compass. That's the vector bearing, 19 degrees Aries. He was found on, okay? That's the aspect, okay? And if I turn this on, this is 72 feet away from that, um, um, from this line, okay? 
So now when you go to Jennifer's, okay, this is all her patterns. I know she's going to turn up on one of them. I know she's going to turn up on one of them because that's, they turn up on their patterns. Okay, so if I move this out a little bit, I don't know how far you guys went. I think the furthest I went out with her case was I summed the, um, what did I sum here? What did I sum? Hold on. I summed, I'm, I'm in her actual map here. What did I sum? I summed the, uh, I can't read that. I summed her son Mercury to 47 miles. So I don't think she's, I don't think she's out any further than that. Okay, so if you go to her, um, let me go out 47 miles. I don't think she's any further than 47 miles. That's where I put my compass. Okay, I don't think she's past that point. Um, and from what I've read and what I've listened to in some of the videos that I watched on her behalf, um, you folks think that she never even left the, left the city. So is she on somebody's property? Anybody have a pond? Anybody with money who had a lot to lose and she's on somebody's property? Could she be in somebody's murky basement? Um, you know, that Mars in Leo is contained. Um, you know, that, you know, she could be contained in something because all fixed signs are, they're fixed because they're stuck in between two other signs. Okay, that's why. It's just a natural order. We're just interpreting nature is, is, is really what all, uh, is what astrology does, okay? And um, so, but... All her radiuses that we went out here are, um, you know, these are all the miles and distance that we went out. You can turn them on and turn them off, you know, and look at them one by one and see what they're going over. Now, when you peruse our study, okay, you're going to find out that you're going to see that, see how they're coming up, a point of disappearance here, point of recovery here. They're not right on the line. Okay, so when you look, see, they're not right on the line. You got to move over it. Okay, you got to be in and around it. Same thing with the distance. Okay, distance is a little bit tricky. Okay, this is the distance. This is what it measured. So we're in the area. We're putting you in the area. Um, again, our, again, I can't say it enough that our maps work when you work with Intel that up to the case. Um, what else did I do here on her? Okay, we're almost at an hour here. I'm sorry. Um... Uh, I did her birth. I did her birth stars too because I wanted to get some confirmation as far as uh, where she could be. So right now I have her son Pluto square on. Okay. So um, like say if you were going to turn the disappearance off and just look at her natal. I typically like to put the birth chart over the residence. I'm not sure where her residence was. There was some article said that the party was on Emerson. Then there was another article that someone thinks said that she lived on Emerson or home on Emerson. I, I don't know. It's very frustrating of half the articles that you read and they are, um, you know, they contradict each other. Um, but anyway, um, Jennifer's lines here, patterns could actually um, help to say, well, gee, you got that going over that pond too. Okay, so very often we see that this, the kids and their birth stars are pulling right out to where they're recovered too. Okay, so again, here. Then there's this airfield right here. If she wasn't here, um, there's this airfield here, I think. I don't know what that was used for. I don't know if that looks like that's some place that they could have gone. It looks like there's a body of water there, and that could be now. I don't know what it was like 30 years ago, but I just hot spotted that. Um, then there's a quarry here. Is this a quarry? Yeah, there's some kind of quarry here, and I don't know if that's water on there. Um, I don't know if that's some place the kids could have went at night to mess around any businesses where they used to go to mess around um, um and there was another thing that i did here let me just turn this on for you okay so all these little eyes turn them on turn them off okay um you know if you turn all these on if i turn her birthday off if you turn all these on at once look what happens i'm pretty much saying she can be anywhere right Look at that. That's what that's that's what all planets are doing at the time. That's what they're doing in their measurements, okay? And these see how all the you're seeing these doubled up here because the same planet is aspecting that planet and this planet. And so they're drawn out twice. Okay. 
So that's what you're seeing here. You do not want to look at it this way. You look at it this way and you won't trust it. You need to look at the patterns one by one and judge them by themselves against what you know. Okay. Uh, ten, not, uh, in our study, nine, uh, I told you that in our study, where is it here? Mm, oh, where is it? Did I move that? Let me see. Let me go back. In our study, 83 times, 33 times the sun formed an aspect. Okay. The moon did it 32 times. Okay. And out of 44 of the cases, it was a conjunction that one of the, so you're, so at one of the solid lines gave us the direction. Okay. So when you look at Jen's chart, the moon, the moon, the sun, the sun, these are good ones. These are the ones, these are the ones really look in depth at these. I'm not saying that she won't turn up on Mars, Pluto conjunction, the square. I'm not saying that she won't. She very well could if this is going over water and if this plays in with, you know, okay. Um, but what I, what I want to say to you is that in, in majority of the cases, the sun and the moon are playing in. So really give these a good, good look. Okay. Give those a really, really good look and turn them on one by one. All right. And, uh, what I did was here, remember I told you earlier in her chart, I have this working folder and I did golf courses. These are a whole shitload of golf courses that I did. Okay. I, I put a sun for golf courses. I did want to put football fields, but maybe you can do this yourself. Um, some of these don't want to uh, scale down with when, when you zoom in. But I kind of thought you can either turn these on and turn these off if you want. Uh, there, was there one football field there? Is this high school? Oh, here's Gillette Stadium. I don't know because I kept on getting that feeling of football. I kept on seeing a football shirt. Um, and so I don't know why, but I, I, I took a look at where Gillette Stadium was compared to where you guys are so that's on too and you can actually maybe map up some of the other football fields or something or where these kids would have went and you know did their drinking and gathered and you know where they hang out um you can turn that on and turn that off you know you might want to look at a line then turn it on and see if there's a golf course near it like um you know how would they have maneuvered around you know this uh um I just kind of get the feeling from her chart that where she is, is just, it's not just, it's not quiet. Like that there's stuff happening there, you know, there, it, that it, I'm not going to say it's busy and industrial, but you know, I, I just get the feeling of, of movement of where she is. So, um, so that's it. So this is our map. This is the work we did on her behalf. And I'm sorry that this was given us to us this in January. That was six months ago. And here it is. It is uh, June 25th. And it's uh, um, finally done. And uh, um, I hope it serves. Um, I hope it serves your efforts. I hope that somebody will actually give it a really, really good look and apply what you know about the case. And um and maybe, uh, maybe it could lead to, um, maybe it can lead to Jennifer being found. Um, I believe that um, it it actually bothers me a little bit that her moon, that her Mars here in her, um, let me just say this, that her Mars here is ruling her resting place, and it's unaspected, and this could be why um, she has not been found. Um, but. I'm wondering if maybe one of those lines are going over somebody's home or bar where she was um, and you can maybe hone in more on that person. Maybe, you know, maybe a confession. Maybe, um, you know, typically I like to see, typically I like to see something, the ruler of this house um, be mutable. I like to see the ruler of this house be an aspect to something that tells me that there could be change in the resting place. Here it just feels like it's stuck and it's not making any aspects to anything, which is, you know, kind of where we're at 30 years later, you know, she hasn't been found. So I'm not going to say it's impossible and that she can't be found. I'm just, I'm just wondering if, you know, that this reason that she has not been found so far is because of this Mars is just sitting up there unaspected and it's stuck somewhere. And, um, anyway, um. You know, all we can do is put the information, tell you what we know, um, and hope for the best and hope that what we've done here for Jennifer will help in some way. 
and hope in some small way. Uh, half the reason why I do this work is because I was a lot like Jennifer when I was younger. I had the same Venus and Neptune conjunction that she has. And um, uh, my no one, you didn't know. It, it, uh, you would never know. If something would have happened to me when I was younger, you would have, you would have never known which way to look because I had friends from all over town. Uh, I never told the truth about where I was going, who I was dating, who I liked. And um, I put my mother through hell. And my mother's one of the reasons why I actually do this work, this work today is because um, there was lots of times when um, once I started driving, I was out uh, that I would spend the night at a friend's house and I would never even call her and tell her where I was. And um, so um, anyway, um, again, it's my mom and what I put her through is one of the reasons why I do this work. And uh, so hopefully we did something or said something here that will will help. Um, so come home, Jennifer. Thank you and God bless.